Everybody shout encountering the face of Jesus. Say it one more time. Encountering the face of Jesus. This was an amazing portrayal of that. But I want to read actually is going to be quite a bit of scripture to you because I want to go to two accounts of this story in the word of God. First of all, Acts chapter 9 and then going over to Acts chapter 26. In Acts chapter 9, it's uh, the, the, the writer of Acts, Luke, uh, uh, physician Luke, apostle Luke's account of what just happened, what you just saw. And it says this, and I'm going to be reading very, very fast because it's a lot of scripture. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. That's where you saw him, he was on his way to Damascus to kill and to, or to arrest uh, the Christians who were in uh, Damascus, the followers of the way, the Bible says. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way that he found there. He wanted to bring them, <clears throat> both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from he heaven suddenly shone down around him. Everybody shout, the glory. A light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and he asked, um, hang on, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he cries out, who are you, Lord, little L? Saul asked, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go. Everybody say, get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground but when he opened his eyes say it with me, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there, uh, there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias and the Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to the straight street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He's praying to me right now. I have shown him in a vision of a man named Ananias coming to lay uh, hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to believers in Jerusalem, and he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message message to the Gentiles and to kings. I want to read that phrase again. Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and he found Saul and he laid hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And instantly something like, say it with me, scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight and he got up and was baptized. Say amen for the word tonight. Let me take you very quickly to the uh, Paul, the apostle Paul's account of this very same story, one you just watched. And this one he was speaking um, before King Agrippa. So it is actually Paul in first person saying, I used to believe. Now pay very close attention to how he words this. I used to believe that I ought to do everything I could to oppose the very name of Jesus the Nazarene. So you see the 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 uh, the uh, the flavor of that sentence there. Uh, Paul is sincerely communicating to King Agrippa and those around that he thought he was doing the right thing. Say amen. He thought he was doing the right thing. So he goes on to say, indeed, I did just that in Jerusalem, authorized by the leading priest. I caused many believers there to be sent to prison, and I cast my vote against them when they were condemned to death. Many times I had punished them in the synagogues to get them to curse Jesus. I was so violent violently opposed to them that I even chased them down in foreign cities and one day I was on such a mission to Damascus armed with the authority and commission of leading priests and about noon your majesty or King Agrippa I as I was on the road a light from heaven brighter than the sun shone down on me everybody shout the glory 
and my companions. We all fell down, and I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is useless for you to fight against my will. Who are you, Lord, little L? I asked, and the Lord replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get to your feet. Tell your neighbor, get up on your feet. Amen. For I have appeared to you to appoint to you, you as my servant and witness, you are to tell the world what you have seen and I will show you and what I will show you in the future. And I will rescue you both from your own people and the Gentiles. Yes, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. Shout a loud amen for the word tonight. Come on, put your hands together. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, that's more scripture than I normally read, but I wanted you to get that story Paul or Saul, uh, for those of you who don't know the Bible that well, and that's okay because you're learning, uh, we call him Saul, but later his name was changed to Paul, the Apostle Paul, as we re mostly refer to him. But here, what you just saw there, and the scriptures that I, I just read to you, he was Saul, Saul of Tarsus. He had an encounter with the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. He had an encounter with the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Christ. Stay with me here. Uh, one definition of an encounter is just simply means a face-to-face -face meeting. If you have an encounter with someone, you're having a face-to-face -face meeting. There's other definitions of it and ways you can describe it, but I like that definition because uh, I think it's very, uh, especially spiritually speaking, I think it's a very good uh, uh, definition when you're talking about encountering God, or as we are tonight, encountering the face of Jesus. Saul had a face-to-face -face meeting with the face of Jesus Christ. He encountered the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Why do you keep saying that? Because the scriptures tell us in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, it says, for God who said, let there be light in the darkness has made this light shine in our hearts. Now look at this. So we could know the glory of God that is seen where? In the face of Jesus Christ. So the glory of God was seen seen by Saul of Tarsus in the face of Jesus Christ. How many know that was a pretty amazing experience that he had? And we also know in the, throughout the Word of God in the Scriptures, anytime we see a face-to-face -face encounter in the Word of God, it is usually followed by a release into kingdom destiny and kingdom purpose. Somebody shout release, release. It's usually followed. We see this in the, in the life of Abraham. We see this in the life of Moses the life of Jacob, the life of, uh, life of David, of, of Mary uh, in the New Testament. We see this in the life of Peter. And then now, of course, in the life of Paul or Saul, and I'm sure there's others. But Saul encountered uh, the life-changing presence of Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, he was temporarily blinded by this encounter. How many know that sometimes the Lord has to get the attention of the hard cases? Come on. Tell your neighbor, I hope you're not a hard case. Amen. He had to get the attention of Saul. He was blinded uh, uh, in the natural in order that he could be able to see in the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He was blinded in the natural in order that he could begin to see in the spirit. I, I just want to stop and say this. The glory, the glory of God brings an anointing to see what religion has blinded us to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The glory of God brings an anointing to see what religion has blinded us to. As I was preparing this message, I just thought, Lord, you just so orchestrated our pursuit this year. We must begin pursuing his glory. We must begin pursuing his presence because nothing else, if we started with character, if we started with dreams, even if we started with this harvest and just say we loved uh, the lost souls in our city. There is no way that we could effectively do that without first encountering the glory and the presence 
of God because the glory of God uh, anoints us to see the what Jesus sees. Come on. Anoints us to see uh, the heart of God and it anoints us to see what religion blinds us to. So Saul needed to see. He didn't need to see in the natural. Now he did there at, at right after the encounter because uh, the Holy Spirit blinded him. But he did not need to see in the natural. He needed to see in the spirit because religion had covered his spiritual eyes. And Jesus knew, and, and I'll maybe, I don't know how much I'm going to get into this, but Jesus knew that locked up inside of this very angry and violent and prideful religious man named Saul, locked up on the inside of him were revelations and nations. Yes, yes, yes. Locked up on the inside of this angry, cynical, bitter, prideful, arrogant, oh, the list goes on and on and on. Locked up on the inside of him were revelations and nations. I want you to shout that as loud as you can tonight. Revelations and nations. Look at somebody and say it. Revelations and nations. Are you beginning to get a picture of why he needed a face-to-face encounter with Jesus and the glory of God? I'm going to just kind of take us to current right now because 13 out of 27 of the books of the New Testament were written by the Apostle Paul. Paul's message of grace and, oh my goodness, and Paul's message of love to the Gentile nations and the churches plus his three missionary journeys, which may not sound like a lot to us these days, but that was a lot back in Bible times, helped Christianity in those days grow from just a small group of followers to a worldwide faith. Uh, Centuries later, where we are today in 2013, his influence continues to impact us through the 13 epistles and the books that he has written in the New Testament. Most of the doctrine that was formed has been formed off of the epistles that were written that he wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and his universal message of the gospel of Jesus Christ continues to echo throughout history and throughout centuries and throughout time where he said in Galatians 3.28, I love it, I love it, I love it. There is neither Jew or Greek. There is neither slave or free man. There is neither male nor female for all are one in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout revelations and nations. Isn't that amazing? Revelations and nations were trapped in this man by religion. Religion. And Jesus appeared to him face to face and the glory of the Lord around him. He said, I've appeared to you, Saul, to appoint you as my servant and my witness. And Saul, you are to tell the world what you have seen and what I will show you in the future. Revelations. And he says, I'm sending you, Saul, to the Gentiles or to the nations so that you can open up their eyes to truth. I'm going to tell you, Saul was a top dog Pharisee. Now, some of you may not understand exactly what that means. And I really, it's not my intent tonight to, to break out uh, necessarily the spirit of religion, even though I'm going to go into that in just a minute. But, but just so you'll understand, he was a top dog Pharisee, all right? He was up there. I mean, he was, he was, he was, he was naughty. Tell your neighbor, he was naughty. Yeah, he, he, was, he hated Christians and he was, he had layers and layers of religion, which I will describe to you in just a moment or define for you in just a moment. He had layers of religion that were covering his spiritual eyes. Someone who had revelations and nations locked on the inside of him had layers and barriers of religion that covered his spiritual eyes and blocked the truth and the purpose of God for his life. Because a spirit of religion, and I'll get to that in a moment, will blind people to truth and it will blind them to purpose. Can I hear an amen? One 
one thing stood in the way of the release, there's that word, the release of the revelations. One thing stood in the way of the release of the nations, and it was religion. So he needed an encounter with the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Why, Pastor Kim, the face of Jesus? Because in the face of Jesus is the knowledge of the glory of God, the scripture just told us. And in the glory of God is the revelation or the understanding uh, of the will and the purposes of God. I hope you understood what I just said. I got to move on, but that's very important to the teaching tonight because daily encounters with God's glory and daily encounters with the face of Jesus Christ will not only transform someone like Saul of Tarsus into an apostle Paul, but it will transform you and it will transform me into being vessels that carry revelations and nations. Put your hands together if you believe that tonight. Daily encounters with the face of Jesus and the glory of God. Praise and worship positions us uh, to see the face of Jesus. And the Bible says that we are to seek his face. Uh, and Because when you are looking at the face of Jesus, when you are looking into his face, you know his mind, you know his desires, you know his heart, and you receive his spirit, which we'll get to in just a moment. But now Saul, Saul is physically blinded. He is physically blinded as, as the movie portrayed there. He is physically blinded. And yes, this literally happened. It's in the word of God. Uh, uh, the, the Lord needed Saul to be anointed to see with the spirit of Jesus and not the spirit of religion. He needed him to be anointed to see with the spirit of Jesus and not the spirit of religion. This is why I believe that he appeared to him face to face there. He needed him to look into his eyes. And then as he looked into his eyes, because of the glory, be able to see into his heart and be able to see into his mind and receive the spirit of Jesus. But religion, it can be likened to what I'm going to say tonight as a spiritual Leprosy. Everybody say spiritual leprosy. Spiritual leprosy. I'm taking you somewhere tonight um, because we, we go and we see that now Saul was physically blinded. The Bible says in Acts 26, 18 that instantly after Ananias laid hands on him, in, instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. Now in the original language, which is Greek, uh, that the, the Bible was written in, the word scales means a flake or to peel, but it is also associated with and linked with leprosy. Now that doesn't mean he necessarily physically had leprosy on his eyes. It's just meaning it was like that, all right? And I'll get, I'll get to that in just a moment. But to understand the magnitude of Saul's conversion, we must understand the spirit that Saul was operating under. He was operating because it was a huge, huge miracle, just his conversion. As a matter of fact, uh, the writer Luke rates it up there with all other miracles that happened in the book of Acts. But we must understand the spirit that he was operating under. Saul operated heavily under a spirit of religion. Now, don't get afraid when I say spirit of. Don't get, don't get, don't get afraid. Don't think, uh, 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 -hoo -hoo. I'm, I'm running out here the first chance I get. Don't, don't think, I'm gonna, I, I, I want us to understand tonight the work of the enemy when it comes to a church, an individual believer or a church pursuing souls and pursuing the glory of God. There's certain things that we must look at to make sure that if we're going to shift into that culture that we're not caught up in some of this same stuff. Tell your neighbor, amen, it's right, amen. So Saul operated heavily under this spirit of religion. And so for the sake of clarity, for those who may not understand why I'm referring to it negatively, because sometimes when you refer to, re refer to religion, it is in a positive sense. And of course it can be. Uh, religion can be a general term that uh, for, uh, excuse me refers to uh, outward religious 
acts such as going to church or reading your word or depending on God, a pure religion, uh, uh, pure religion is, is what that is, a, a, a sincere devotion uh, to God. And, and we just say, well, they're a religious person or, you know, they have religion or this kind of thing. But it can also mean, in the context that I'm speaking tonight, stay with me, an organized system of doctrine with an approved pattern of behavior. So if you don't measure up to what I'm saying, uh, then you can't be a part of my club. Come on, somebody. Uh, the behavior has to demonstrate a proper form of worship. Pure religion, as the Bible refers to it, focuses on the inside or on the heart of a person. And this is what Jesus came to preach and Jesus came to bring to the earth. But the other kind of religion that I'm referring to tonight turns into something called ritual. And, and, and instead of relationship, it's a dull ritual where they're just going through the motions and they have long list of rules and long list of, of expectations and, and they perform and they, 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 they love to be looked at. They love the accolades. They love for people to listen to them. They love for all of this focus on the outside. This is where we find Saul of Tarsus. Uh, for, for your benefit, who you just saw uh, 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 portray Saul of Tarsus riding down uh, the road on the, the horse going after believers in Damascus. He was eat up, if you will, with arrogance and pride and anger and hatred because this is the digression. The more you give yourself over to religion, as I'm explaining it, in the negative way and into a religious uh, uh, a spirit, you will digress to become exactly like Saul of Tarsus. Can I hear an amen? And so he admitted it himself, of course, after his conversion, Acts 26, 5, he said, him speaking of himself he said according look at this to the strictest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee look at those words according to the strictest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee I hope that you're getting a picture and I know some of you are, are know the Bible very well and you know what I'm talking about but I'm, I'm going overboard tonight because there's some that don't understand this and I want them to understand the depth of religion and negativity and hatred uh, that the uh, Saul of Tarsus was in. I believe that the scales that fell from Saul's eyes was an actual deliverance from the spirit of religion. That is what I believe. I believe, and you, because because with deliverance there can be various manifestations of this kind. You say, you say, Pastor Kim, you mean the Apostle Paul needed deliverance? Come on, church. He was killing Christians. He needed deliverance. Tell your neighbor, he needed it. He needed it. Hallelujah. I believe the scales that fell from his eyes, as soon as the man of God, Ananias, laid his hands on him, as instructed by Jesus himself, I believe it was an instantaneous deliverance from the spirit of religion. It had to happen. There was no way that the, uh, that the uh, revelations and the nations could be released uh, uh, out of him uh, uh, and the purpose of God out of him in his life until the spirit of religion had been cast away from him. I believe that is what happened there. Why is that so? important because the nature of a religious spirit it will distract from kingdom purpose listen to what I'm saying the nature why is it so important that we that we understand about this spirit of religion because it will distract from kingdom purpose and right now we're in soul pursuit right now we're in pursuit of God's glory and God's presence we want uh, to pursue his harvest and his character and his dreams we want to pursue all of these things if if we are caught up in, we want a culture of revival uh, that is that is pursuing God's presence and that is reaching out to the lost and of discipleship that is discipling the nations. If we start going into that culture and we hit up against this, oh y'all hear what I'm saying? Jesus was getting wanting, needing Saul to head into another culture, but on his way into another culture, he had to encounter the face of Jesus Christ and the glory of God to knock some religion off of him so that he could get over and operate into the arena and the anointing that God needed him to operate in. Amen? <laughs> Woo! Oh, y'all can clap louder than that. Come on, that's a word. A spirit.
spirit of religion will distract you from kingdom purpose and it makes you resistant to change and satisfied with status quo. You're, you're, it will halt uh, the kingdom of God from advancing aggressively. A, a, a spirit of religion, as, as he had, will deny the power of God. Don't you know that's true? And will focus on carnal things as a substitute and will focus on self as a substitute. Anything that I can control, anything I can control, this is, this is how the Pharisees were and how the religious were and, and still are today. Uh, the, the, the spirit of re, uh, a religious spirit will deceive us into accepting a religious form and, and be overly concerned with appearance and block the revelation and the heart encounters with Jesus. Why are you calling it a spirit, Pastor Gim? And I want to answer this question because actually in the Bible it is not referred to as a spirit, but I think it is a spirit operating from the enemy because of its nature. Every Everybody say nature. Its nature is if the religious spirit nature is everything contrary to the spirit of Jesus. And so if it's contrary to the spirit of Jesus, I mean just totally upside down, opposite of the spirit of Jesus. Friends, I think that's a no-brainer. It is a spirit from the enemy. Come on. This is why we call it a spirit, a religious spirit. So what does that have to do, Pastor Kim, with soul pursuit? What, what does that have to do? Here it is. Religion, as I'm describing it tonight, in the life of a believer and in the life of a church or in the life of a church are like the, is like the scales that were, was on Saul, Saul's eyes. And it can be a spiritual leprosy that eats away at the spirit of Jesus. We stood around these altars last Wednesday night and, and we were praying and we were seeking God. And I, and I know we were sincere and we were talking about shift and we were talking about culture shift and stuff like that. And I believe everyone in this room that was here last week meant that with all of their heart. We have no reason to doubt that. I believe everyone meant that. But just as sure as we decree and we declare that thing, it's going to be challenged. And can I tell you what usually is the first thing that challenges it is any time that I have to step out of my comfort zone, any time that I have to step out of the status quo, any time that I have to, to, to ruffle my feathers, the Spirit has to ruffle my feathers and, 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 and get me uh, uh, out of my comfortableness, if you will. That right there, my friends, is a spirit of religion. You mean you expect us to do what as leaders? You mean you expect us? You, Jesus, you mean you expect me to do what? No, no, no. We can do it this way, and it's not nearly as much trouble. It's not nearly as much cost. It doesn't take as nearly as much time. And all the while, the spirit of Jesus is is, is speaking out and saying, if you go that route, I'm going to have to get a light from heaven. You I have to run up against the glory of God and the and the and the and the face of Jesus and maybe even be blinded for a while. Come on. Maybe not physically, but in other ways. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It can be spiritual leprosy that eats away at the spirit of Jesus. A spirit of religion likes to subtly settle on believers or on congregations, uh, distracting them from kingdom purpose, denying the power of God, uh, de deceiving them into accepting ease and comfort and the form and the outward appearance, all the things I just said. And then we are lulled, if we're not careful, into a state of status quo and surface empty religion, maintaining that right there. Everybody say maintaining. Tell your neighbor maintaining. That's a very dangerous word. All the while, ma maintaining this, what I just described to you, is very easy because there's little effort and there's little cost. But there is a huge cost for the kingdom of God because if we, if we operate there, if we stop there and we say, man, I want, I want souls to be saved, I want soul to be saved, and we just gather around big days or we just gather around when it's convenient for us. Or, but no, 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 if, if we just do that, then, then, then we settle into the, the status quo. There is a cost for the kingdom because few souls are one and few devils are fault. And if few souls are won and few devils are fault, that sounds like to me that hell is winning. Come on. This is the result of the spiritual leprosy called religion. And this church is when we need an encounter with the face of Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, once again, I'm going to go back to what I said at the very beginning. I'm not accusing anyone of this. 
I'm not accusing myself of this. I'm not accusing you of this. I'm not accusing anyone of this. But I don't think in our attempt not to accuse that we can excuse ourselves from looking at something that the enemy might try to bring in, come on, or might already be in here, that would hinder us and hinder the culture of revival and discipleship from being established and entering into that. Can you hear an amen if you're in agreement? All right. So when Saul encountered Jesus that day, he received, hallelujah, a transference of the spirit of Jesus. Jesus, yes, in the place of the spirit of religion. How do we know this? He received a transference of the spirit of Jesus in the place of the spirit of religion because two, now there's many revelations that, that, that the apostle Paul had. We know that. But two, I believe the top two uh, that we could pick out of all the revelations is the revelation of grace. Come on, somebody shout grace. And the revelation of love. Come on. Somebody shout it loud. Grace and love. Tell your neighbor, grace and love. This is how I know, and this is how we can know, that there was a transference of the spirit of Jesus for the spirit of religion because he wrote this in Acts chapter 20, verse 24, but none of these things, or he said this, but none of these things move me, neither do I esteem my life dear to myself. If only I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have obtained from which was entrusted to me by the Lord Jesus, faithfully to attest, say it with me, to the good news, the gospel, say it, of God's grace. Hallelujah. His unmerited favor, spiritual blessing, and mercy. Now, folks, that is the spirit of Jesus. Amen? And then love, Romans chapter 13. And, of course, we know 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is what we call the love chapter. But look what he wrote in, in Romans. Oh, no man anything except to what? Love one another. Now, I want you to listen to this verse. This is why I chose this one and not one out of 1 Corinthians. He says, for he who loves his neighbor who practices loving others, what does it say? Has fulfilled the law. Now, Jesus taught that. We know Jesus taught that. But this is coming from someone who was eat up with trying to obey the law. That's all he thought about. That's all he cared about was the law and that people lined up according to the law. And here he is saying, oh, no man, anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law and meets all of its requirements. And the commandments, you should not commit adultery, you should not kill, you should not steal, you should not covet, all have an evil desire. And any other commandment, he said, are summed up in the single command, you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. Somebody shout love. Come on. These were two major things that Saul of Tarsus lacked. But when he encountered the face of Jesus that day, when he encountered the glory of God, there was a transference of the spirit of Jesus and the scales of religion had to burn away and to fall off. Why did they have to burn away, Pastor Kim? Because the glory of God was too, too strong and too overwhelming. There was no way, there was not any way that they could stay on him because the glory, when we're saturated in the glory, it will lead us into revelations and it will lead us to souls or to nations. Amen? In the face of Jesus, church. We receive the spirit of Jesus. Now, I hope you're getting what I'm talking about tonight. I know this is very different than what I've been teaching the last three weeks on soul pursuit. But you see, we've turned a curve now, if you will. We've turned a corner in that I know we want to we want to invite uh, people to church, and you need to keep inviting. I preached about that last week and on and on and on. But we must understand that this must be something. I don't come to church for my, just for myself anymore. Amen, church? We don't come to church just for ourselves anymore. We come to church, yes, to get filled up, yes, to te yes, to get understanding in the word, uh, for, for, for fellowship and all this kind of thing. But I come to church because I know there is a lost and dying world out there, and I need to have somebody that comes with me. Amen? Everybody shout, soul pursuit. In the face of Jesus, we receive the spirit of Jesus. Now, what I believe is the spirit of Jesus, and it is much more that could be put in this, but for the sake of tonight's teaching, I believe that revelations and nations are the spirit of Jesus. I believe that Jesus carried truths, yes, and revelations, or the same thing, and he carried souls. 
I believe the spirit of Jesus is truths and souls. He carried truth into the earth, and he carried a heart of the Father for the souls of mankind. And how many know and understand that Jesus still needs transformed vessels that can carry revelations and nations today? Shout amen. Revelations, what do you mean? And let me just explain this very quickly. Not a, not a, not a deep, in-depth teaching, but this. It's seeing truth more clearly, which accepts accelerates a transformation in my life and in the life of others. That's what revelation is. It's seeing truth more clearly. Say that. Seeing truth more clearly. That's what revelation is. Seeing truth more clearly so that it accelerates transformation in my life and in the lives of others. So it would be kind of like this. What truth do I need to see more clearly in order to help open my eyes and the eyes of the nations? And when I say nations, of course, we're we're talking about passion for souls. We're talking about lost humanity. And I believe, and I believe that you believe, that the world or the nations are in the face of Jesus. And they are in the spirit of Jesus. His eyes and his heart contain all the people of the nations. And so Jesus, I'm almost done tonight. Jesus told Saul, you are to tell the world, Saul, what you have seen and what I will show you in the future. That's revelations. And he he says, Saul, I'm sending you to the nations or to the Gentiles. That's the nations. To open their eyes. Everybody say, open their eyes eyes. Shout it louder. Open their eyes. The very thing that Saul needed himself, which was sight, Jesus needed him to give to a blinded world. Church, this is the spirit of Jesus for you and for me. Because not only does the apostle Paul or Saul at that time carry revelations and nations. I come to prophesy tonight that Fresh Start Church carries revelations and nations and that every single individual that fills this place that calls this church their home you carry revelations and nations and the same as Jesus told Saul that day on a road to Damascus he is telling you he is telling me he is telling you a pastor and he is telling us as a corporate body go and tell them the revelations go and tell them the truths go and tell them what is going to open their eyes who are them? What is them? Where are they? It's the souls. It's the nations. You mean we have to go across the sea? No. You have to go across your street. Come on. The nations are across your street. The nations are across the cubicle from you. The nations are in the grocery store aisle with you. Somebody shout amen if you know what I'm saying. And he says the reason that I need you to impart the revelations and go to the nations is so that their eyes will be opened. Amen. Is that powerful or what? So I ask us tonight, will we be willing to, if it applies to us, will we, we be willing to shed the scales of religion in order to give sight to the nations? Will we? I know, I know, I know you will. But I'm just saying that what you just witnessed in a movie setting and what happened in the life of that man, I mean, they really portrayed it pretty good. He was screaming out, trying to oppose Jesus, looking into the very face of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is how strong, this is how strong the spirit of religion can be. It will resist. It will oppose. It will mock. It will threaten. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It is ugly. Tell your neighbor, it is ugly. You're not ugly, but the spirit is ugly. It will oppose, it will try, it will do anything and everything. And some, most of the time, it's very subtle. Most of the time, it's very under the radar. Most of the time, and, and, and it just operates like that. And it's because it doesn't want to be noticed, but yet it wants to operate. And so it tries to control from within, and it tries to operate from within. And it, and it will usually, uh, 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 it will begin to attack the revival spirit. It will begin to attack the discipling of the nations. It will begin to attack the very fact 
fabric of the spirit of Jesus. And you say, this, some of y'all been sitting there wondering, why in the world is she teaching and preaching to us on this? Because I'm seeing from up here, everybody. I'm seeing from up here and not just from up here. And I understand that just because we had a good Easter Sunday and Resurrection Sunday and the altars were filled, I understand that we have a foe and we have an enemy. And most of the time, if not all of the time, he's not going to come in and try to break things apart with murder or with with all these other kinds of, 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 of sins that just flash at us. He comes in suddenly through a spirit of religion, a religious person or persons that try to break up the spirit of Jesus that is being enthroned in the house and I serve him notice tonight in the name of Jesus you are not welcome in this place you must go you will go because you're looking at a man and you're looking at a woman who will not tolerate a spirit of religion and many other things that we won't and I don't mean that arrogantly I just mean that God has set us here as shepherds and God has set us here uh, to oversee and God has set us here to, and so we will guard. And whatever that means for our reputation is what it means for our reputation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But this will be a house of revival and it will be a house where souls are discipled and nations are discipled. I say that not arrogantly. I say that emphatically and by faith because this is the mantle that God has given. Amen? So we must cry daily for an encounter with the face of Jesus. We must cry daily with an encounter with the face of Jesus and the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus. And as we do that, hallelujah, we're going to witness amazing things, amazing things, individually as well as corporately. But just as Jesus was saying to Saul, he is saying to Fresh Start Church tonight, Acts 26, 16, now get up on your feet. (laughs) Arise. Get up. Saul, for I have appeared to you to appoint you. Yeah, you can stand up. Go ahead. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. I'm serious. I just got a couple paragraphs. Some of you are like, is she really meaning get up? (laughs) Don't leave, but get up. I'm, I'm almost done. I believe this is what he's saying to us. This is what the Holy Spirit says. Now get up. Arise. Now, we've been doing that in measure, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what, guys. It's, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm just, I'm pumped up. It's like, you know, seeing lives change, seeing souls saved, seeing families restored. Come on. Seeing marriages put back together, seeing sons and daughters come home, seeing the prodigals run to the altar, seeing, seeing those who have been out for uh, months and months and months of church. I, 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 I lost count of the number of people that either I talked to directly or someone else told me about that either used to attend here or used to attend a church somewhere else and they've been going nowhere. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nowhere. This is the trick of religion. This is the trick of the enemy. This is how he wants to try to take out the kingdom of God. So I'm rejoicing tonight. I'm rejoicing in this fact. Number one is that we've got our focus. Come on. And that we've got uh, the anointing uh, of Jesus and we've got the spirit of Jesus that we are pursuing and we are, we are going after. And I'm excited about that. But the Lord told Saul and he's telling us tonight, get up on your feet or arise. For I have appeared to you to appoint you as my servant and my witness. Locked up on the inside of us are revelations and nations, truths and souls that need to be one to Jesus Christ. So he's saying, get on your feet, stand at attention before my face and receive the transference of my spirit because you, Fresh Start Church, have been called to give sight to the nations. You've been called to give sight to the the souls. Are you getting what Jesus is saying to us tonight? I read the scripture a couple, a few weeks ago when I was talking and preaching on the glory of God, but I want to read it again because I love it. I love it. Arise and shine to a new life. Shine with the radiant with the glory of the Lord for your light has come and the glory church is risen on you, on you. Darkness is going to cover the earth. Darkness is going to cover the nations. Dense darkness is going to be on all the people, but the glory of God, the Lord shall arise on you. The spirit of Jesus is going to be on you and his glory shall be seen 
on you and nations uh, shall come to your light, the glory and kings to the brightness of your rising. Somebody needs to put your hands together and give our God a mighty praise. Jesus, show us your glory. Show us your face tonight, Lord. Show us your face, Jesus. Come on, cry out. Show us your face, Jesus. Show us your glory. We want to encounter you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift those hands, and I'm closing tonight. Father, I just pray tonight. We want a daily encounter with your glory, with your face, Jesus, so that you can transform us into vessels that carry your revelations and your nations, oh God. We want to carry your revelations. We want to carry your nations. Come on, just make that your prayer. God, I want to carry your revelations. I want to carry your nations in my heart. Lord, I want the spirit of Jesus, spirit of Jesus. Father, I, 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 we don't want to waste your time. Lord, Saul was wasting your time, and, and you had to come before him and say, Saul, Saul, I've got so much for you to do. I need you to release revelations and nations. But, Lord, we want to, we want to come to you so you don't even have to come to us, Lord, and arrest our attention. We want to be before you on our faces. We want to be before you in your presence. We want to be before you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we seek, we seek that spirit of Jesus. And Father, we just seek, Lord, tonight that revival, Lord, and that discipleship, Lord, that you are leading us into. And Father, we understand that there's a lot to be said on that. But Lord, we just want to, by faith tonight, reach out and receive that in Jesus' name, because that is your heart, Lord. That is your heart. That is the face of Jesus. Hallelujah. We believe that tonight. Come on, just lift those hands one more time. Matt, if you can find some music to play back there. I want us just to pray in the Holy Ghost for just about 30 seconds or 45 seconds. Come on, and just pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of, of speaking in tongues, your heavenly language, first of all, you can be tonight, but don't worry about it. Just worship the Lord with us. Come on, pray in the Holy Spirit. If you have your heavenly language, and let's just release. Come on, release the rivers, 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 release the rivers. Release Release the rivers, release, 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 release. Hallelujah, and the and the Bosite, 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 Hallelujah. Come on, just pray in the Holy Ghost. I speak over you tonight. I speak over you as individuals. I speak over you the glory of the Lord. I speak over you. I speak over you the hunger, the hunger, the hunger to fall uh, on your face and stand at attention, both if you will, in the spirit before the face of Jesus. I, I just pray over you that you receive the transference of the spirit of Jesus tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on, Lord. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, glory. We ask you to come. I pray that there be any scales of religion that are on our eyes, that they be, that they be burned off through the glory tonight. In Jesus' name, if there be any scales um, that are keep keeping us and hindering us from seeing uh, uh, the spirit of Jesus and seeing the face of Jesus and seeing the harvest and seeing uh, the souls and experience a revival, I pray that they would be burned off in the glory tonight. In Jesus' name, it's not by might or power, it's by your spirit, O oh Lord. And Father, we stand tonight, we stand in faith, Lord, and we say that we refuse to be satisfied with ease and ritual, Lord. We refuse to be satisfied with the status quo. We refuse to be satisfied with just a form of religion and not have the power, Lord. We we want the power. Come on and cry out for the power of God. The power of God. The power of God cannot manifest where there are scales. So we just say scales be gone. We want to see the power of God. We want to see the display of the glory of God. Not for our own benefit. Not for our own attention to us. But that all attention be brought to God. And to the praise and the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Lord tonight. Oh tonight, tonight. Release your divine power. Release your awesome some power. Release the power that is associated with your glory tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I, need, I, I, I just hear in the spirit tonight. I hear somebody crying out from the depths of your heart. From the depths of your spirit. You know that there are revelations and nations on the inside of you. And you concur with that. You agree. You bear witness with that. And the Lord is just saying to you tonight, just by faith, just by faith, reach out. See my face and allow me to release you into that next level. And the Lord is wanting you to know, don't be afraid, but you've got to trust him. You've got to trust him at what that next next phase is, what that next level is, what that next uh, uh, step is going to be. And he's also saying, don't be uh, enamored by 
by what it may be. And he's also saying, uh, don't, don't forget to count the cost. He's saying, don't forget to count the cost because with revelations and nations on the inside of us, there is a cost and there is a price to pay. Fresh start, I need to tell you tonight that a revival and discipleship culture, there is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. And some are not willing to pay it. But I can tell you that Pastor Paul and myself are not satisfied with anything less than that. We are not satisfied with anything than that. We have already made the commitment. We will pay the cost. We will pay the price in the spirit in Jesus and in the natural. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, if that was you, amen. Amen. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I just feel, just just pray for just a couple of more minutes. I just feel just whoever that person or persons were that the Holy Spirit was just ministering to. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and soak it in tonight because it's saturation. Saturation in the glory will lead us into revelations and nations. Saturation in the glory will lead us into the revelations and the nations, the souls that God has. Father, we welcome you. We welcome your glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What do you want, Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. What an awesome God. Give us your spirit, Lord. Give us your heart. Give us your spirit, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And the church said amen. Shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God, you're so good. Hallelujah. All right, we have an awesome chance in these next few days before Sunday. We have an awesome opportunity, first of all, to get on our face and encounter the face of Jesus. Amen. And to encounter his glory and to encounter his spirit. And then we have, we have several days before Sunday that we can pray and ask the Lord to give us favor. That we can speak into the lives. We can speak revelation. Come on. And truth into the nations, the souls. Where you work, where you live, in your family, whatever it is. And whatever, whatever you can do with the help of the Holy Spirit. Uh, to win them to the Lord or bring them to the house of the Lord. So hopefully they will come to Jesus here. How many know church? That's what we need to do. Amen. You say, well, what's going on this Sunday? Well, Pastor Paul will be here. Pastor Kim will be here. You'll be here. Come on. Give your neighbor a high five and say, that's a pretty special day right there. Amen. That's an awesome day. It's a special day because it's the Lord's day. And it's the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, bless your people. Go with them. May they receive the word, Lord, in even, even greater, Lord, just like slow uh, medicine, if you will, that seeps into our bodies and seeps into our, our minds and our hearts. Just let that throughout the next few days seep into our hearts and into our spirits. We pray in Jesus' name we give you the glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.